Yo friends, what's up? Today we're going to talk about how to talk between components without props and events in Swell. So today we're going to learn about Swell's context API and not only that, but we're going to implement it from scratch to understand how it works. And we're going to cover some other things, how to pass reactive state through context and so on. Alright, but before we get started, here's a message from our sponsor. I'd like to thank this video sponsor, you, the viewer. You can support the channel through Patreon or a YouTube channel membership. Members get early access to videos, help shape the content and a special Discord role. You can find all of the links in the description. Thank you for your support. Alright friends, I created these four components named A, B, C and D and I'm importing this parent component A inside pluspage.cell but I have a huge banana problem because for example when I define this prop here named banana, I'm just passing a simple banana but the only component that cares about this banana is the D component, right? And no other component cares about this, but unfortunately we have to pass this as a prop for every component. So in the component A we have this nested component B, so we have to pass the prop here. And then in this component B we have to declare a prop and we have to pass it again, right? And the same is true for component C, just so that the D component can get the banana prop. And if you look at the result we can see that we have our beautiful banana here. But as you can see this is very tedious, so there has to be a better way. Alright, so let's pretend that the context API from Cell doesn't exist. Can we solve this problem on our own? Yes, we can. Here's how. Alright, so I'm just going to close everything here. And I made this special file named context at home. Because why do we need real context when you have context at home, right? And I was debating if I should really do this because it's really complicated. For example, we have to define a context first. Let's use a map. And then we have to export a function to set the context right. And then we need another function to get the context. And I mean, this is all super complicated. I don't even know if I should be doing this. Uh, wait, we're already done? Uh, never mind then. But jokes aside, this is how Svelte actually implements context under the hood. It actually uses a map and a couple of simple functions. Alright, but to set the context, we need more. We need a key and we need the value. And the key can be anything and the value can also be anything. Or you can just type this as a known. That's completely up to you. And in this case, we can actually just pass a generic T here, even though we don't need to do this. And then we can just say context set. It has this nice method, which accepts a key and a value. How convenient, right? Wink. And then we just pass the key and the value. All right, so how do we get the value from the context? Well, we actually want to pass a key. And then we can return context get. It accepts a key. That's basically it. And the context API has two more functions. So we're going to define has context, going to pass a key, and then we can return context has key. And there is another one that exports the entire context, so we can say export get all context. Alright, and this is just going to export the context. That's it. Alright, so let's open component A, and this is where we want to set our context. Alright, so let's go here. And I'm going to say set context. Let's see, we're going to have context at home. How beautiful is this, right? All right, so we're importing context at home. And let's just set the context. Of course, we're going to pass the key. This can be anything. Key, banana. Let's just name it key. And we can pass any value. And in this case, we can just pass prop. All right, now let's go through every component one by one and remove the prop. So I can remove the prop from here. Because now this is just a reactive piece of state. Alright, so let me save this. Let's go to component B. We don't need to pass a prop anymore here. How beautiful is that? Let's go to component C. Yoink. And let's actually go to component D. And now we no longer again need this prop here because we have context. Okay, let's remove this and let's say get context. So we're importing context at home. Alright, so we just need to pass the key, which is going to be key. And now this is going to return banana. And we can even say on prop. Alright, so now if I save this, let's actually go back here. I'm going to refresh to prove to you that I'm not lying. We can see we got our beautiful banana. And of course, instead of prop, we can actually get the entire context. So we can say get all context. But of course, to do this, we actually have to spread this into an array. We have to say get all context. Let's invoke it. I'm going to save it and you're going to see it works the same as before. Now we have our key and our value inside. And we can also check if the context exists, of course. So let me just actually console log has context. Let's just import this function and let's pass it the key. All right, let's save this and see what we get. 
so we're going to get back true. So this works as expected. Alright, so far we've seen that this is just regular JavaScript, right? We haven't even used Svelte's context. But before we do that, I actually want to talk about passing reactivity through context. And this is the danger of not understanding JavaScript because then you're not even able to understand the framework you're using. So in this example, this isn't some black magic. This is just a map under the hood, right? But I think the problem is that people don't understand this part with states, so they think this is some magic, they have to do something special so this can be reactive, but that's actually not true. And you can even watch my recent video on sharing state in Svelte to understand how this works. But in this case, for example, prop is already reactive because we're passing an object here. So Svelte under the hood is going to use a reactive proxy, is going to turn all the properties on the proxy into signals. I can just use input text and let's bind the value of the prop. We can say bind value prop banana. Let's save this and now we can look at the result. All right, so now we have this input where we bound the value and now we can change this. Hello, and you're going to see it's reactive. But let's say, for example, that you're not passing an object. I'm just going to copy this over. Let's just say that this is just a humble banana. It's not an object. It's not reactive. Well, of course, this doesn't change how JavaScript works, right? Now you have to somehow pass a reference to this. You have to use a function, use a getter and a setter. So, for example, instead of passing this reactive value right here, you can pass whatever you want. You can, for example, say get banana, and now you can return prop, boom, easy peasy, lemon squeezy like that, right? This is nothing special. If you don't want to use a function, of course, you can use a getter and a setter. You can say get banana, then you can return prop, you can set the banana if you want, and etc, right? So we can actually just do this, and now we can actually set prop to e, and that's basically it. So this really isn't some magic, right? Repeat after me. Svelte doesn't change how JavaScript works. We can just pass a primitive value like a string and expect it to be reactive because we're only going to have that value at the time it was created. And this is why things like proxy state are so awesome because they at least make this simpler. All right, there is one more important thing to talk about and that is using unique keys. Now let me show you why would you want to use unique keys. So let's go back to pluspage.cell. And let's say, for example, that we're reusing this component. So I'm just going to copy over this component. Let me save this. I'm going to go back here, refresh for good measure, right? Let me actually just zoom out just so we can see everything. All right, so for example, we're going to actually have some kind of weird box. This isn't even reactive, like what is going on. If we try typing it here, we're going to see both of these components are going to update. How can we actually solve this? Well, we can solve this by using a unique key. So let's go back to component A. And now we can create a unique key. So we can say const key and we can use whatever. We can use an object or a symbol. And let me actually show you why that is. So for example, if we go back here, let's for example, compare key to key, right? This should return true as it should. But objects and symbols are always going to be unique because for example, if we compare an object, it looks the same, right? This should return true, maybe you're thinking, but it's always going to return false because they're not the same. And the same is true for symbols. We can use symbols. We can pass in a key, we can compare another symbol, and it's also going to return false. So you can use either one of them, but in most examples, you're going to see people using symbols. So we can just say symbol, key, and now we can pass this key. So this is going to be unique each time. All right, let's save this. Let me refresh the page. Now when we go to this component and we start typing hello, you're going to actually see it's just going to update this first one. And when we type hello here, it's just going to update this second component. So you're going to have unique state. And this is why unique keys are so important. So if you want your state to be unique between multiple component instances, use a unique key. All right, so the only thing we have to change is update context at home to use Svelte's context. So we just need to change the import. I'm going to say Svelte. Then let's go back to our D component and we're going to use Svelte here also. And the API is the same as I said. And we no longer need this because it's unique anyhow. This should work the same. We should get all the context. Let me remove this. And if I go back here, we're going to see everything works the same as before. So if I go back here, I can type hello world. And you're going to see this works even better than our example because we had some weird things before, like the double context here and etc. All right, but Swell's context actually works a bit differently. All right, so here's how Swell's context API works. Basically, when you set context in the parent element, it stores that information in the component tree. 
So you can imagine that as some object, it has some information about the component, right? So maybe component.c for context, and then it sets the context on that component. And that is so the state is called to the component. So for example, in the D component here, when you say get context, it actually just goes up to the parent component that has the context and it returns the context. And some of you might be asking, why not just use global state? It looks the same like context, right? So it looks just like an extra step. But the reason for that is because using global state is unsafe, especially in the context of the server. We already seen the problem that we have when we created two instances of the same component, how we shared state on accident. And the same is true if you're using global state instead of set context. So this is why global state is not the answer. It only safely works when your global state is only used client side. So when you're building a single page application, because if your state ends up being managed and updated on the server, it could end up being shared between sessions and users causing bugs. And it may give the false impression that certain state is global when in reality it should only be used in a certain part of your app. And this is a topic for another video because if you read the Swell docs, they actually tell you why that is, why you shouldn't use global state, right? And why you shouldn't even use state on the server. And they have this entire section on using stores with context on the server. So if you're using server-side rendering, this is the only safe way to do it because you can leak your user's information or worse. And I'm going to put all of these links in the description. All right, so we learned that context is scope to the component, but what does that actually mean? Let me actually just show you. And of course, this isn't black magic. We can look at the source code. We can actually go to the definition of set context. We can actually see this function set context. It accepts a key and a context, and it's initialized in this variable context map. Use this function get or init context map. Okay, what does this do? Let's just go to the function. Okay, this isn't important. Ah, this is something interesting. So it literally has this thing component context.c. Hey, if nothing exists on this, create a new map, get the parent context with the context that we passed in. So we can actually see it searches through the parent until it finds the context. That's basically it. And the component context is actually at the top here. Let me actually search for it. Component context. There it is. Boom. It's just a regular variable. All right. So in what component context are we in? Okay. This component assign this context to it. That's it. And it's no different for receiving the context. So we can say get context. Pass in a key. And if we log this value, we're going to see, we're going to get this proxy, but that's not important. Let's actually look at the code. So we can go to the definition, get context, it accepts a key. Again, it's creating this context map using this function, get or init context map. And in this case, it's going to use context map get with the key that we passed in and it's going to return the result. That's basically it. So yeah, it's really nothing intimidating. This is just regular JavaScript. All right, so now we understand what it means that the context is scoped to the component. Regardless if we define the context here or here, it's just going to be scoped to that parent and its children. And then when we want to get the context, it's just going to walk up the tree, the parents, until it finds the nearest context. And of course, this isn't React. It's not going to re-render everything and etc. It's just going to set or update the value in its place. All right, but you're already going to see people use set context and get context directly and that's mostly because it's hard to type, so even the Swell docs have this nice section on encapsulating context interactions. So I'm just going to copy their example. I created this context file in lib. So I'm just going to open it and I'm going to copy their example. All right, so I'm going to rename user key to banana key. You can name this whatever you want, of course. Let's just say that this is banana. I'm going to actually create a type banana. So what did we have? We had an object, we had a banana, and it was a string. So you can easily type your things here. And now this is going to be banana, same here. All right, so instead of set user context, you can name this whatever you want for set banana context. And we want to get the banana context. And of course, it's not user, it's going to be banana. Great, so now we have great type completion. And if we go back here, instead of using set context, we can say set banana context, and we can just pass in the value, right? If you pass in something that he doesn't like, he's going to warn us, he's going to, hey, this doesn't match banana, right? So we can just pass in our banana. We don't need set context anymore. We can remove this. And now actually, I think this is going to work. Yeah, we can refresh and we're going to see everything works because we just fetch every context possible. But of course, if we go back to D, we can go here and we can just say const banana, get banana context. 
and we can just log the value of banana. All right, let's log this, and we're going to see we get back a banana. And of course, if I look at the type information, we're going to see that we have types and everything. All right, friends, before I go, I wanted to show you a practical example of using Soil's context API. In this example, I have a simple canvas component and a child square component. I'm creating 10 columns and 10 rows and defining the size X, Y, and the fill style using this helper gradient function. And then I just pass the props as usual. But we already see the ugliness of using this approach because, for example, we need to bind this component instance canvas to this variable canvas just so we can pass it to square, right? And let me actually show you how this works. If we go to canvas, for example, here we have just regular props, nothing special, a reference to the canvas, and items is using a reactive version of set. So Svelte has reactive versions for map, set, date, and so on. And for example, here we have an effect where we get the context for the canvas, and we clear the canvas each time items gets updated. And how this works is that we have this add item function, which accepts a draw function, and then we just add this function to items. And because it's reactive, it's going to rerun this, and it's going to run every draw function, and it's going to redraw everything. And the only reason I'm using this effect inside add item is so it can run the cleanup when the effect is destroyed. And you can see that we can export functions from a module like this. And now when we get a reference to this module using canvas, we can actually invoke add item. So let's look how square works. We can see that we have some props here like canvas, X, Y, size, fill style, and stroke style. And then we have to use this effect when everything is mounted. Then we can say canvas.addItem and we can pass in this draw function. And the draw function is really simple. It just accepts the context and then it checks if there is a stroke style or fill style and then draws the square. So let's fix this by using the context API. So for example, let's go back to the canvas component. And now instead of exporting this function, we can say set context, let's give it a key, canvas, and then we can just pass it the add item function. That's it. We don't have to do anything else. Let's save this and let's go back to the square function. Back here, we no longer need this effect because we can just say get context, we can get the canvas, and then we can say add item and we can pass in the draw function. And this is going to complain about the type, but I have this type right here, so I can just pass it like this. So this is just a generic, and then we can remove this effect. All right, let's save this, and now we no longer need to pass canvas, we no longer need to bind this value. And we no longer need this. And this is complaining because I forgot to remove the type. So if I go back here, let me just remove this. Let's save everything. And now when I go back here and I refresh, everything is going to work. And that is the beauty of the Swells Context API. If you like what you've seen, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.